Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of the Collider Games podcast. My name is Dennis Zinn, and I'm here with first from also in Los Angeles, but not in the same place as me, but uh, also in L.A., Dorian. How are you doing, Dorian? What's up, guys? I'm doing good. What do you mean, Dennis? I'm like, right. I'm, I'm in the room next to you. What do you mean? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, if, if that in were true, I would have, this, I'd have the same cool Outer Worlds uh, background as you. But uh, I don't. Uh, but me and Dorian just got done playing a couple hours of Avengers uh, co-op online, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, but fun. also joining us is uh, Josh Bears, all the way from South Africa. Still doesn't have good internet. You got the... Are you still doing the mobile internet thing? No, I right now I'm supposed to have 50 megabyte uploads, so I don't know why there's an issue. Uh-huh. Like I went from t- two megabyte upload speed to a fifty megabyte upload speed, so uh-huh. I don't know. I might not because uh, you guys look crystal clear to me, but that's obviously because nice. my download speed is great. But am I not looking good? No, uh, you look fine. Okay. You, have, you have you have no cap this week, you know? Yeah. Like the other weeks where you had to piece yeah, out. Un- uncapped, unshaped. So I'm I'm very yeah. happy. All right, cool. All right, uh, a lot of big news this week. You know, some weeks we get. You know, a little less this week. Got a lot of big things. You know, first we had we're t- the state of play was supposed to be a big thing. The uh, Spider-Man exclusive to PS4 Avengers was going to be the big thing. But then this morning, we got another big announcement, which was it's official. I mean, the rumors had been circulating about this, but now it's official. The Batman Arkham series developer Rocksteady has announced they're working on a Suicide Squad video game. And actually, in a few weeks, they're going to announce some more details, probably have some sort of trailer at the DC Fandom uh, digital fan event. Uh, They released this teaser picture that had uh, the Suicide Squad logo as a target on Superman's head. Uh, Just, you know, further speculating that... that, uh, Superman is going to be the villain or possibly the Justice League itself as the villain. Um, so what do you guys think of this? Josh, first tell me, uh, one, are you a big fan of you know the Arkham games that uh, Rocksteady has developed? And what do you think about the direction they're going with Suicide Squad? Uh, huge fan of their games. I've lo- I mean, it's honestly, it's I don't know anybody who didn't enjoy any of the Arkham games. You know what I mean? They're 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 really good for what they are. I'm 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 I was hoping for another Arkham game. It's I'm a little on the on the fence about this one. It's it, it kind of for me it almost seems a bit like their reply to Avengers, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. we're going to make a DC super anti superhero game if you will with our own crew of people, you know what I mean? Um so it, it could be that it's I wonder how they're going to pull it off. Just Thinking in terms of their previous games, it's very different from like any type of uh, co-op or multiplayer. Not that we we don't we don't know if it's going to be co-op or multiplayer, but if it's the Suicide Squad, I'm going to assume you can be the different characters and stuff. So there's a lot more work that goes in in terms of like making different move sets, making each character um, stand out more, and like I, I don't know I don't know how I feel about it. I mean, look, I think it's going to be good. One well, that's that like I expect good things from this company. It's definitely. I don't, I don't know what to expect in terms of is it going to be like an action, action RPG game? Is it just going to be an action game? Like, mm-hmm. it could be. I'm, I'm excited to see what they say on the 22nd of August. Dorian? Oh, I'm definitely excited about this. I, this this news itself, it, it kind of surprised me that we got it this early. I, I thought they were going to just hold off on all the game reveals until the DC fandom. But in my mind, I think they were just not feeling pressure, but I feel like there has just been so much news around the Avengers and, and Marvel and just Spider-Man in general and all these games. So I feel like they just wanted to drop a little teaser, just let you guys know, hey, we got some stuff coming for DC fandom too. Because for before then, I knew they, were, they said that there were speculations that it would be two game reveals at DC fandom so i'm uh because i know that there are still talks about it there being a batman uh court of owls type game going so maybe i can see them doing like just teasing this showing that there is a suicide game in the works and then at dc fandom 
game, doing the reveal and doing like another Arkham type game like you're talking about, Josh, because I definitely would want something like that. But if they're doing because while we're streaming the Avengers game earlier, somebody said that the rumor is that it would be in the same type of style as the Avengers game that we're playing currently, like where you have those characters that you can add uh, customization to do all the type of things that you're doing with this game where you can switch characters. So if they're going to do it where it's like two different games, introducing us to two games and one of them is this type of multiplayer co-op, not so heavily relied on the story itself, but just more about the experience with your friends and then make the Batman game the more singular focused story driven one, then I'm all down for that. But if this is the only reveal we get mm -hmm. at DC fandom and they kind of like just say it's going to be as story driven as it is multiplayer or something like that, then I'm excited for it. But like Josh said, I prefer personally would have liked another Batman game and then and then separate it with this Suicide Squad game. But I don't know. I think it's exciting. I think they're just it's going to be a smart marketing tool because if, if we're timing it up right and with coronavirus, uh, James Gunn Suicide Squad should be releasing sometime next year, hopefully. And so maybe with that, they'll try to do a tie in market it at that all around. So I'm excited to see what they do with this. But overall, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely cautiously optimistic about how they handle the, the Avengers type grouping thing if they're going to try to do something like that. You think it'll be exclusive? Oh no! Unless I mean, if micro like if they if Microsoft and and then come to an agreement with WB by the time DC Phantoms comes around, I don't know that uh, that would be interesting. I hope it's an exclusive because I'm I'm tired of Xbox uh, Xbox fans just not getting not getting what they want because they almost had a goddamn right when they found out Spider Man would be exclusive on Xbox. So it, it would it would definitely be a much needed win for the Xbox if they can make this Suicide Squad game, game an exclusive for the Xbox. Yeah, uh, I don't see it being exclusive to either platform. I think it's be cross-platform. I think even if, even if Microsoft does make a deal and acquires WB Games, I think it's too late in the game to do that. And Microsoft wants to make money too, so they'll do cross-platform. They did that for Outer Worlds. Uh, mm -hmm. They won't do that for Outer Worlds too. So whatever next is coming. But yeah, the rumor is here we have Rocksteady doing the Suicide Squad game, maybe a different direction, maybe some co-op, maybe, you know, like you said, switching around different, different characters. But then WB Games Montreal, who developed uh, Batman Arkham Origins, they could possibly be working on the Court of Owls game. So maybe we do get this double, you know, reveal uh, at DC Fandom. We get the Suicide Squad and, and, and maybe... If that actually does happen, then it leads me to believe that whatever Suicide Squad is, is going to be a much different direction than the typical Arkham Rocksteady games. Because why why double up on the same thing with different quote unquote skins? You know what I mean? I mean, obviously, right. it's going to be more than that, a different story, and different characters. But you want to diverge it in some way so that you don't have exact, almost the same thing coming out at the same time. So... Uh, it'd be Do you guys exciting, remember though. Gotham City Imposters? Mm -mm. No, it was like it's it was kind of like their answer to don't quote me on this. It was kind of like their answer to Team Fortress, it was their own mm. multiplayer game, and uh, I hated it. It was all, so I hope it's nothing like that. Wait, which uh... like, I think it's Gotham City Imposters. Is it, wait? Oh no, I'm thinking of the I'm thinking of the the free one you could like make your own character that DC online thing, you know oh, what I'm talking no. about. Yeah, okay, the DC, yeah, I played DC online. This was like, I think there were like factions. There was like the Joker's faction. So you didn't play as the actual characters. You played as like the the, the lackeys, if you will. You know what I mean? Like there were mm -hmm. a bunch of people dressed like half-ass dressed as Batman, and like mm -hmm. the back crew. And it was it was a silly game. It didn't uh, didn't go very far in terms of a multiplayer. I think it was third-person shooter. It didn't go. I didn't get. I mean, you guys didn't know about it, so that says a lot about it. You know. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, 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 all in all, I'd be interested to see if I, I would personally, hopefully, with this Suicide Squad game, they do do something completely left field than the Arkham series because, like we said, I, I still want an Arkham type game, but I would be down for them Rocksteady to attempt something completely different. And yeah, it, sure, it might be a, a just an answering to them to try to have something to compete with this Avengers type game. But I'm I'm fine with that. I mean, like especially if you're going to do a villain route, if you if you differentiate it up enough, then I'm fine with it. If it's not a, a complete carbon copy of the Marvel's Avengers game, you add a whole new story, make make the characters different. 
new customizational features. What I would do if I was DC, especially if they're going to like this, because this is all speculation because we don't have any hard details. But if they are doing like the same type of multiplayer, I would just study, like look at Marvel's Avenger. I'd be downloading the beta right now, playing my heart out on it, just seeing everything that it has and making sure that we either can top that or make something equivalent to where it feels different enough. So hopefully it is in the same vein as Avengers, just with its own spin, with its own touch. Yeah, definitely. Um, so that kind of leads us into the next one, which is, so the Avengers beta went live today for anyone who pre-ordered the game. Me and Dorian played it last week. We have uh, our first impressions video that's up on the YouTube channel, also on the podcast feed as well. Uh, me and Dorian just finished another two-hour session playing it. But the bigger news was that Spider-Man, as a playable character, is going to be exclusive to the PS4 and free version. So, you know, um, great news for PlayStation fans, but not so great news for Xbox fans, which, you know, if you own both systems, it's pretty much a no brainer of which one you're going to purchase now. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of talk, you know, uh, about this move. Is this the right move for the industry? I mean, in terms of these, we already have exclusive games, right? Like, that makes a lot more sense, right? Because you have Sony owns a bunch of studios. They make games. They want them to be exclusive to their platform. Microsoft has some studios. They bought some new studios recently just for that purpose. But now this game is actually technically supposed to be a cross-platform game. But now you're giving exclusive features to one particular console over the other. Now, that just leads into a whole mess of things of, you know, are we screwing over our other players or Xbox players? Do the Xbox players feel slighted? Like uh, Dorian had mentioned, uh, Dorian, what do you, what do you think about this? I don't know. I'm, I'm in a weird place with this right now because like we are fortunate enough to uh, we, like some of us do have both consoles. So I'm like, oh, well, I'm not tripping about it because I I have I'm going to get Spider-Man regardless. But if I had just had an Xbox and let's say you're a big ass Marvel fanboy and they're like, mm-hmm. hey, Spider-Man is my favorite character. I can't wait to play with him in this game. And they're like, nope. It's only going to be exclusive for the PS4. I'd feel some type of way. I'd be a little mad because I'm not just going to go buy a whole ass console for one specific character in one game. Like, I like I'm not going to. I wouldn't want to do that. But I'm 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 a big fan of the the character, so I don't know. It's 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 a hard line to follow because at the same time you can make the arguments like, yes, yeah, Sony is like Sony's PlayStation. Spider Man is like the definitive Spider Man as of now, and they like they own that character in a way. But it's like you shouldn't. It, this is a different game this isn't i'd see if it was something like oh the this avengers game is connected to that world and this is the same peter parker that we're getting from that game that would be different but if this is just a whole introduction to a new peter parker a new spider-man that we haven't seen before then i i I don't know i feel like it should have it maybe could have gone to to both consoles because at the same time it'd be different if xbox had their own marvel exclusive character but they don't like if they had like let's say daredevil Mm -hmm. or something on the xbox Mm -hmm. games and they were like okay daredevil's only going to be on the xbox Xbox. version and that would be fine like if there was an exclusive for each like how they do the pokemon games like there's a a pokemon on this one that you can't get there's a pokemon on this one that you can't get so if there was something like that where there was a a fair trade-off that there would be a character that neither console would have then i think that would be i think people would have taken it a a bit better but since there's not since uh, xbox doesn't have any exclusive characters they they're, they're just kind of shortchanged but they did say this would be the only character that that w- this would happen to so i, I don't know pretty I, big I character like it, though it is a big character but at the same time maybe maybe what they'll do is s- slowly maybe also make miles morales uh, a playable character for both versions and you can change his spider-man suit or something so it's like all right you can't play with peter parker but here's miles morales here's your here's a spider-man that you can play with so i can see them maybe doing something like that or giving us venom as well and making him a playable for both sides i don't know yeah, I don't see it. I don't see anything from the Spider-Man universe touching the Xbox anytime soon. Um, Josh, what do you think? Um, I mean, I, I agree with Dorian where I think the only solution for this would be for there to be uh, a separate free exclusive on the Xbox. Because I think of other games that have done this before. Um, most notably, I think it was Mortal Kombat. I don't know which Mortal Kombat, but each console had like one of its own 
special DLC characters like Negan or something. I think I can't remember. Someone had Negan. Someone had, uh, one of the consoles had Negan. One of the other consoles had Jason or something. I could be very wrong. This was a while ago, but I know that it was like Xbox had an exclusive DLC character and PlayStation had an exclusive DLC character. So I think the only fair trade off would be to give Xbox another free character. I also agree with you, Dennis. I do not think it's going to be from the Spider-Man universe. So I don't think it's going to be. Ve- I don't think it's going to be Venom. I don't think it's going to be Miles Morales. It'll probably be like someone complete i can't even like think off the top of my head right now but it'll be so incredibly different who knows like maybe maybe peter quill from um <laughs> you know it could be star lord uh but it's one of those things where it's a it's like i wouldn't say it's a happy mistake because obviously it's one of the the more you read up about this it's marvel has a huge tie to playstation already you know what i mean yes in terms of like getting for instance like the amount of effort that the spider-man game went through to get the iron spider suit in the game like they already laid the groundwork for this to happen years ago so it was kind of like out a bit of a happy accident but at the same time i think we would be foolish to not assume some kind of deal happening here as well because this will definitely affect the ps5 console sales uh not drastically but it will definitely affect the ps5 console sales because uh the game will carry over you know what i mean See um, now that now sorry, but now that you mentioned it, I I think it would have been better had they just made everybody get uh, Spider Man, but then the PS five PS four version, they are the only ones that can get the Iron Spider suit, or they can get some of the only exclusive suits that you would see in the PS four Spider Man game. I think that would have been a better trade off. I'm sorry to cut mm-hmm. you off, but just mentioning that Iron Spider suit, I think that would have been a happy medium to to appease both fans like here everybody gets spider man but the ps4 people they're the ones get that the get iron the spider suit. Suit. yeah because yeah, yeah. yeah i think that would have been a, a better way to approach it but sorry josh yeah no so i mean let's yeah I, I i hope i'm gonna assume they're gonna take a look at this backlash and work i mean it's not gonna happen overnight they're gonna take their i mean there's so many deals that are, that are involved with intellectual property and what characters you can use what characters you can't use so i don't think it's gonna happen overnight but i do think soon they'll announce uh, having their own, like I said, it's, I don't think it'll be from the Spider-Man universe because of the ties that the Spider-Man franchise has to Sony itself, and it has for years. I mean, just the pre, mm-hmm. like even the early Spider-Man games. You know what I mean? It's been tied to PlayStation for so long. So it's for those reasons. Like I don't, I don't even know if Xbox would have the the rights to be able to use Spider-Man. You know what I mean? It's uh, it's a complicated situation. But I do hope that Xbox fans get their own DLC character that'll also be free. Because I mean. That was that was for me is the coolest part is that he's supposedly going to be free on PlayStation like as a DLC character which is great yeah. and then um, I know we're getting Hawkeye which will be free yeah. as well but that'll be on both consoles um, which if it, if the Xbox was going to have its own exclu- exclusive Marvel character who would you guys want to see out of curiosity yeah hell they can take Hawkeye I'm not tripping about him I would have <laughs> they would have just thrown Hawkeye over on Xbox exclusive I wouldn't have been hurt um, I mean I, like it, I said it, it, I. Uh, oh, sorry. I was going to say it had to be someone big to compare with Spider Man. Like even even Hawkeye isn't. You know, what I mean, Hawkeye is no, not no. as big as Spider Man, so no, you can't compare. Not. I mean, you need like what about Vision. No, he's not. Big I, I would say I would say yeah. if anybody, like I mentioned earlier, I think Daredevil. I think people would Daredevil. be pissed. Oh, PS, would be PS4, so I, I would be pissed. I would be pissed. Black if Panther. Did. Daredevil. It, it would wow, have to be dude, somebody I would be and pissed it. off if Black Panther was an Xbox exclusive. No, dude, I me and sony would have some more fighting word or i mean me and xbox no i think it would have to be i think daredevil would be the closest just because you would want to have somebody who can kind of traverse the same like kamala khan right now essentially tra- travels like a like spider-man would as would travel in the game like she has those long ass arms that can elongate her and and kind of essentially be the webs in a type of way so you need to have somebody that can throw like daredevil has those little batons that he can use as swingers so i think that would be the the best option where it's like a fair trade off is like he can still swing he can stick to not stick to walls but climb walls and stuff so i i I think daredevil would be the the best option if any and since he's in hulu contract hell and he's not going to get any love in the the movie in universe anytime soon just throw him on who i mean throw him on the xbox and and give it make them that that the dlc for them and i think everybody that's that's a good choice you know what i would love to see as a dlc character much further down the line is blade Oh, no, Blade. Yeah, Blade. Blade would be cool. I would love to see Blade in Avengers. They bring him back like, to the MCU, period. Seriously, straight up. Like, I know they wanted Soon. to reboot it at some point, but 
Like, I man, I know Wesley Snipes is getting old, but I want that man to be Blade again. <laughs> like, give it no, to I'm, me. You know? he, he he can cameo. Mahersh Ali, I think they made a good choice with him being Blade. Oh, yeah? I, I, yeah, I think he, he'll be, he'll kill it. As long as they do, it, do pay some homage to my boy Wesley Snipes. I think if he gets a cameo or a minor role in the in the movie, I'll be fine with that. Because oh, yeah, he, yeah, like said, Black, Black doesn't crack, but, you know, he, he, he's, he's, he's older. <laughs> he's older now. He, he's, he's had some life experience. I, I do feel bad for the Xbox uh, fans on w- just because I could tell that they're putting a lot of effort into the character design for Spider-Man and his like his uh, and his combat and everything like there. It sounds like they're putting a because they love it like the, they love Spider-Man. So they're they're putting a lot more. I, I wouldn't say more, but they're putting a lot of effort into this DLC character, probably more than they did into Hawkeye, you know, and it's like I they brought so. this interesting thing up where it was like. How would Spider-Man fight if he wasn't in Manhattan? If there weren't giant tall buildings to swing from? It completely changes his how he's going to... Like, he's got to learn everything from the beginning. You know what I mean? You take Spider-Man out of... You put Spider-Man in the middle of the ocean, and what can he do? You know, I, that's what I want to see. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm excited about it. I think by the time the, the game inevitably rolls out in September, I, I, I hope that they'll come to some type of... Uh, some type of peace agreement or conclusion that that will appease Xbox fans, but we all know Xbox fans are not the the easiest to please. Because I was seeing some some boycott tweets. They're like, "Oh hell no, this, I'm not buying this game." Like just they were going off, and I'm not not saying like they're wrong in a way, but I mean like Spider Man. This is a post. This is he, his his gameplay doesn't affect the actual solo campaign. This is a DLC. Like he he's not a, a factor in the the actual mm. story that they're trying to tell. So. That part of it is like, all right, if he he's not a main factor, he's just a DLC. Somebody play with online is and co-op mode. I could still see being pissed about it, but I wouldn't be like, oh no, I'm boycotting this game to to not because I can't play with this character after I finish the the main heart of the campaign, the solo campaign that they that they wanted me to enjoy. So I don't know. It's 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 hard to to like try to to balance out the who's wrong, who's right, who should be mad, mm. and all that. But hopefully they find an agreement down the line. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right, let's move on to uh, PlayStation. They had another state of play. They had one, uh, what, last month or so, yeah. uh, where, where they revealed all the PS5 stuff. This one was a much more reserved affair. It's focused on the like, PS4 games, PSVR, and then like a little dab of PS5 games, um, a lot of platformers. Um, the things that stood out, obviously, they led with Crash Bandicoot 4. Uh, we saw Hitman, the Hitman trilogy will be in VR, which I think is pretty interesting. Uh, Vader Smart Immortal, move, I think. Yeah, Vader Immortal on, on PSVR for anyone who's played on Oculus Quest or other Oculus or other PC head, VR headsets. Uh, I got super excited when I saw the teaser for the Control expansion uh, with the Alan Wake crossover. You would be. Um, Yes, and then Godfall, I think, was the biggest PS5 thing. Um, that clip actually changed my mind about it. You know, the last time I spoke about Godfall, I was like, I was not excited anymore. I wasn't yeah. wasn't happy with the graphics. Me too. Still not really happy with the graphics, but now that they've explained the gameplay and the the dip, like the different weapon classes and things like that, I'm I'm looking forward to it again, which is good. Yeah, it looked like a, a mix between. God of War and Ghost of Tsushima style of combat. But, I mean, the graphics weren't bad. It's just the graphics don't look like next gen. They just look like... Yeah. It looks like God of War... I mean, God of War's graphics are great, so it's not like Godfall has crappy graphics, but it just doesn't look like PS5 or whatever. So, And then, so, that was the big... There was there any other? There was I think a, maybe no. a few other things on PS5. A couple of Crash- really cool indie games that I think was quite cool, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. But nothing worth really like talking about. They just like really cool clips, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, they're bringing thought- they're bringing Auto Chess to PlayStation, which I think is an interesting move. It's a very casual game. I play it on my cell phone. Uh, what what stood out for you, Dorian? I mean, if we're being honest, I was under not. 
I, I went in with lower expectations than usual just because they, they let everybody know not to get your hypes up. It was like, there's no big announcements. Chill out, everybody. Um, so I, I, I was fine with it. I'm pretty excited about the control expansion. I've started playing that. I'm loving it thus far just because you've been recommending it for so long. So now yeah. it's just making me want to go ahead and, and complete that so I can get the expansion whenever it drops on Xbox. But other than that, um, the Crash Bandicoot stuff that looked pretty cool, in my opinion. I'm, I'm, I'll, I, it looks like I might actually play that game just because of all the the stuff that they added on to that. Big fan of it growing up. I didn't play the like the second or third one that they dropped on the PS4, but this one, I'm like, all right, you know, Crash got me back. You got me back. I might give it a try. Um, other than that, I thought it was cool that the Vader Immortal was going to the PSVR. I played the first two chapters on the quests but it's, it's going to be interesting to see because if you're if you have a quest in the psvr you're definitely going to play it on the quest like i'm not going to set up my, this psvr system to to play that game like that's it's a lot of <laughs> a lot of chords and stuff so i was kind of hoping that they would maybe announce a new like when they said the psvr i was kind of hoping that maybe there would be an announcement for a new system going into the ps5 like a, a more efficient system mm -hmm. that they could make because more it'd be more powered by the ps5 itself rather than the headset so i was hoping like here here's a new like here's two, only two cores this time instead of five for the for trying to set everything up or something like that but all in all i'm excited for that hitman trilogy in vr because i played the hitman games on the ps4 so if i can be a silent hitman in vr and kill some people without being noticed you know i'm gonna do it like if i'm gonna do it in vr i'm gonna do it so i'm excited about that but other than that nothing really call to my attention um godfall looks okay I'm, i'll probably play it but yeah other than that that's that's pretty much all i got from it yeah remember when crash was uh the the mascot the unofficial for mascot PlayStation? for playstation yeah. for a while because remember it was like sega had uh sonic mar uh, nintendo had mario and then sony had to like come up with their own like you know cute oh character it was do you crash. remember the original japanese design for crash and mm -hmm. well just like the, the japanese cover art for crash bandicoot was so wildly different like he looked so anime um it was yeah they i don't know they went for like a much more cute design for the, the japanese release of the original crash bandicoot it was it was quite quite interesting um Funny. Yeah, that's the game that stood out the most for me personally. It's uh, I'm I mean I'm a huge Crash Bandicoot fan. Like that was my childhood right there, and it's I like it because it it follows, at least it seems like they said that it's a it's a direct like sequel after the third game, uh, Crash Bandicoot Warped. So they are like there were a lot of games that came out after the first three Crash Bandicoot games. Maybe not a lot, but there were a couple. There was Twin Sanity. There were like a couple of like there was a co-op game. There was a couple of other things. There was like Crash Bash. But uh, this is going to, like, story-wise, it'll follow the third game. Uh, they've added a couple new things in, which I, f I think is really cool. C other playable uh, characters. You can play as Dingo Dial, which is awesome. <laughs> like, uh, I wasn't expecting that. I had a feeling they were going to bring back Dr. Neo Cortex as a playable character because he used to be in one of the older games. Um, so I I'm most excited for that. It looks, it looks fun. Like, it was interesting because I was like, how would they do a sequel to this game? Like, the remaster sold well. The remaster was a lot of fun. Uh, it was, I, I still play it to this day. I love playing it. Um, but it's like, how do you bring out a sequel to a game that's that old while keeping like fresh gameplay? So they changed it up a bit, and it looks it looks great, honestly. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Godfall, the, they explained a lot of the class systems, how like the different weapons, uh, how the combat works. And I'm a lot more excited for it now than I was previously at the uh, PlayStation Experience event. Um and it kind they of must have hurt, like, they must have heard us. They had, that was, they had to. We were complaining about it, and they had that like. Didn't they have like a hip hop soundtrack to like? Yeah, the it was like, so like it was just it, it was seemed weird all over the place. Like it didn't it didn't like fit the editing style of the video like either. It was it was odd, but I'm glad that they spoke about the actual mechanics and what the game is going to actually be like. It got me on board for it. I love. Any kind of looter game, any any game with has a good looting system set up, I love it because I love playing game. I don't need, I don't care if I have to grind. I will grind to get the epic loot. You know, I'm I love it. I love that. I love doing that for games, and the combat kind of reminds me of this. Like, oddly, oddly enough, the combat reminds me mostly of like, at least the camera view and the flow of the combat reminds me mostly of Destiny Two, uh, like the melee or, or like the first Destiny melee when they released melee combat as a thing in one of the expansions. It looks very similar to like Destiny Melee Combat, um, but yeah, I'm I'm a lot more excited for it now than I was previously. I'm more inclined to buy it now. And then Hitman VR, 
for me, that was like such a the moment. Like I didn't like as soon as I saw that, I was like, of course, that's a genius idea. Hitman would work so well in VR. I, I felt stupid for not thinking about it myself. Like of all the games I would love to see in VR, that makes sense to me. You don't have to like, I mean, some people are like the gun, like the gun ho approach in the games, but I like being super sneaky and stealthy and you don't have to like worry about fast paced movement in this game. So it just works mm -hmm. so well for the platform. I think it's a super smart move. Um, so yeah, happy about that. And while we're at it, they, they showed the video again, or well, they showed more about this. Uh, I want to get the name right before I get it. Bug snacks. And it's still... Oh creeps me out man it's still creep the animation style the giant teeth when they open up their mouths it's just i find it so like uh i don't i can't even find a word for it it just like it puts me off man uh and then lastly this this is something i hadn't heard about at all hood outlaws and legends we didn't yeah. show much gameplay but i'm i'm there for it 4v4 multiplayer game like set in the dark ages it's like a retail kind of like this whole robin hood thing it, it looks like a lot of fun um, mind you, we only—I think they only showed like f uh, a couple seconds of gameplay at the end of the clip, but uh, very interested in that. And then they had a couple of other e like just like anno, I can't mute mutate mutationum mutationum. That looked cool as well. Like a lot of cool indie games that they kind of uh, uh, showed off that I liked. And then something else that caught my eye before moving on, and this is an older game. I actually saw this on Steam a while ago. Is Temtem. And I had no idea what it was. I'm not a fan of MMOs, but this looks interesting. It's like uh, this Pokemon-like MMO, and I think I uh, might try it out. Rip off? No, bro. Yeah. Did you try as it out? As saw, no. As soon as I saw, it, I was like, "This is Pokemon. This is <laughs> oh, it, straight this up, is, yeah. This is Pokemon, bro. This, how I, if I was Pokemon, I'd be trying to sue them right now. I'd be like, "What the <laughs> hell is this? Like, y'all just jack our game and then try to run it off as a PS4." I, I will say pissed. that the monsters do look they, way too much like Pokemon they, characters. Bro, that's what I'm saying. Like that's they <laughs> like, are. It's like just. Is, oh, is there a lawsuit like, can coming? I copy your, can I copy, copy your homework real quick and change up? Just let me change my name and just keep everything else the same. That's pretty much it. Like I guarantee yeah, you, some of those Pokemon. Like there's a style. Pikachu. There's a Pikachu in Pokemon. I bet you there's like a a Pikachu now in in this <laughs> Pikachu. <laughs> Pikachu. <laughs> Something like that, bro. I, as soon as I saw that, I was like, yeah. If I was Nintendo or. I would be like, ah, oh, no, that's a lawsuit right there, bro. I'm not going to do that to me. Oh, one of the things that I saw that I really didn't care about was, uh, I'm going to get, I might get flack for this because this is a very beloved indie game, but I really didn't care much for Braid. I thought it was a very boring game. Yeah, it was, it had a nice aesthetic, but I thought it was boring. So the anniversary edition is coming out and I couldn't care less. <laughs> uh, Pathless looked kind of cool to me. Mm. Do you guys see that one? The what? Is that another indie Path game? Pathless. Yeah, it was like an indie kind of a third-person platformer. Is the guy with the bow and arrow? Uh, oh, it was like oh, yeah. the, with the yeah. hawk. There's no. It does, um, it does look quite interesting. Yeah. There's no map or whatever. You just you have to like go up and then look around yourself. Um, you know the art styles. You know the it's like 3D, but like with the 2D art style to it. Ooh. Looks interesting. I like the aesthetic. I'm looking at it again now. It's a nice aesthetic. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, you know, overall it's just, I mean, there's a reason why this didn't have huge, huge hype behind the, mm. the announcement because they knew that they weren't dropping anything super big or whatever. But at least they, they came, they warned everybody about it. They were like, Hey, don't get your hopes up, which I respect. <laughs> they were like, they didn't just say it's another state of play. Expect some big news, expect announcements. They were like, don't, don't like temper your excitement. And that's what I did, and I didn't come out disappointed. I didn't wasn't disappointed or anything. So more I mean, PlayStation more studios experience need a, was good, so why not? You know? Yeah, they need a more studios or whenever they're doing these announcements, they need to just say it straight up beforehand. Just be like, hey, all right, here, like here's expect medium excitement in this one or something like that. <laughs> I went in out like they said, lower your don't don't expect any PS5 news or anything like that. So I wasn't, and I wasn't disappointed. So they did a good job this time. Yeah. That's what was disappointing about the Xbox One. I had high expectations for that. I thought they were gonna blow the the roof off the door or roof the blow the doors out or whatever. And see, but had they just said expect some uh, Halo Infinite gameplay, don't expect uh, anything else much, but just some Halo gameplay and and get a new look at the Game Pass, I would have been fine. I would have been like, all right, they told us that's what they were gonna do, and they did it. And now, 
shake your hands, we're good. And then later on this year, they could have hyped up a, their bigger, better Xbox conference, which I mm-hmm. hope is bigger and better. Yeah, and then PS5 and, and, and uh, Xbox Series X still playing the, the game of chicken on the price and the release date. Mm-hmm. They're just, no one's budging. Like, who knows, you know? I'm still who thinking knows? five. I'm still thinking five hundred bucks for the. Yeah, the, I think the, the rumor the is version. The, the, yeah, the rumor is five hundred for disc, four hundred for the disc list. Uh, well, it's I think. Yeah. Ninety nine dollars for a, for just a difference. You but I've been like, bro, what the hell? That what's the even point of getting a disc list in if it's just going to be like a hundred dollars less? I would have been like, you might as well just upgrade me to the in full thing. If I would rather it be. We're going to do that, then it should be four ninety nine well, and three nine. I mean, hundred dollars is a huge difference. That's what I'm it's, saying. I mean, but still, in terms of like, in, in terms of international revenue and like other countries and exchange rates and stuff, it can be like that can be make or break for other people in other countries. You know? No, yeah. My bro. issue though is that for the discless version, I still have all these discs for all these other games. So oh, true. Yeah. If, if, and they, if it's backwards, what about backwards compatible, com- yeah, it is backwards compatible. So then, exactly, how am I yeah. accessing my older games without you know? It's okay, like let's say if I just want to go digitalist from now or, or or discless from now on and just go all digital. Okay, that's not a problem. But now, how do I play my old stuff? So yeah, I mean, I'm definitely getting the disc version just because games are. It's just you. you it's it saves space to have games on disc. You know what I mean? In terms yeah. of how much like space there is, like because space fills up so quickly nowadays. Nowadays, games are 100 gigs. You know. Like like AAA title games are somewhere between eighty to one hundred gigs usually, so that that stuff fills up quick. So I prefer to have disc versions to have as much of it running off the disc as possible. Yeah, uh, if if I'm looking at it right now, I'm probably going to because I like since I got the Xbox late late or Xbox One X or whatever, I, most of my games have all been digital. So if I'm when I upgrade, if I do upgrade, I probably do discless for the Xbox Series X, but then for PS5 because I have a. a crap ton mm-hmm. of ps4 games i'll probably most likely do the disc version just so i don't have to say goodbye to those games because i feel like my p my i've already said this before but my ps4 as soon as soon as the ps5 drops they're going to do some software they're going to do something to do an update on the ps4 and be like bro your ps4 can't handle this like it, it, it's, <laughs> it's time to let it go just just go over to Is the that how like a this when, when that, Apple releases the iPhone yeah. and then magically the iPhone you have is suddenly a lot slower yeah, I feel like did they I like think that's uh, what happened. They, I think they found that out. They're like for real. Like it was like people well, they like, admitted it. Oh yeah, yeah, I yeah. Used to work for them. People but thought the it was like the, yeah, the words people, they used they was thought, very sneaky. They said yeah, yeah. we don't. Whenever we release a new software update, our older models take less priority. That's how they admitted it. <laughs> it was like they also so said they were like saving their energy or the power battery or some shit like that. Yeah, oh, it's crazy, man. Yeah, no, I don't know. I think that lawsuit is still going on. Hmm. Yeah, I'd be pretty pissed too. Um, all right, let's move on to uh, COD, Call of Duty, Warzone Season 5 launched uh, a couple days ago. Uh, I have not gotten the Warzone train yet, but I know that uh, uh, Mark Fernandez, uh, the big boss man over at Collider, he loves it, loves it. he plays it all the time. Uh, the trailer came out. Either one of you playing it? No, I think Josh, so, you said you're gonna play it this weekend. Oh, 100 percent. I had some um actually I had friends like nagging and complaining to me this whole week to play the game. And now that I finally have uncapped internet and I'm not paying per gig, I can I can actually afford the incredibly large updates of Warzone. Um so yeah, and I'm looking forward to get back into it because I don't think I don't think I've played since the end of season three, possibly. Um and it's fun. It looks like they added a train, you know. They uh, like looks like they're showing off new locations. Could be wrong because I haven't played in so long. But uh, for me, it's I like it. It's a fun game, you know. It's a, it's it's a good uh, good game to play with your friends. Um, definitely looking forward to hopping back into that and seeing what that's all about. Um, all right, uh, Microsoft Project X Cloud is going to be available uh, September fifteenth um on uh the xbox game pass ultimate so if people don't know what that is the x cloud makes you allows you to play your game pass games over the internet streaming this is kind of the future the first step into the future of gaming when there's not going to be any con like physical well actually there might still be consoles but they'll just be more streaming type devices like your 
your Roku's or whatever, your fire TVs. So all the processing power will be on, on their end. But anyways, they're going to start that off. I know it's going to be available. Certain games are going to be available, including gears five, halo five, uh, hellblade. See if these are going to be available to play on like your Android device. Um, so another thing attached to that, uh, speaking of, uh, Apple, <laughs> Apple is not allowing Xbox Game Pass to launch on iOS, uh, saying that the testing period, let's see. Yeah, unfortunately, they can't bring the iOS device to the Apple uh, App Store. Apple stands alone as the only general purpose platform to deny consumers from cloud gaming and game subscription services like Xbox Game Pass. So, yeah. Uh, Apple isn't able to review each game that's available through Game Pass. And, you know, Apple locks down their app store, obviously. You know, it's one of those things where they say for certain reasons, and it's partially because of that, like for good reasons, but then partially because, you know, they just don't want it. Um, but, yeah, uh, xCloud will not be available on iOS even though they did have a public preview of it before. Um, so Doesn't maybe Apple they can have their own out. mobile game subscription anyway. Like, yep. Yep. That nobody, I, I personally have not invested in or don't really play much Apple games, but yeah, they have their own subscription service. So I, it, it makes sense that they'd be like, no, we don't want you. Um, we don't want Microsoft playing games on but the but, Google play store has the same thing. What? They've also got, uh, they've got like a subscription thing where you get like a bunch of games per, like you just get access to it's like a game pass but for google play mm. do you play oh, google I, play games <laughs> I, think, I i think i did the free trial and I, honestly i had a lot of fun and then as soon as it ended i didn't i didn't continue it i was I, like that, that was fun while it lasted <laughs> i have not met a single person who has either played games on stadia google stadia or subscribed to the apple <laughs> game subscription have you i have not and if like <laughs> If you are subscribed to the Apple game system, give me a subscription because you are not you're putting your money to not good use. You could be spending on something else. No disrespect. Yeah, to I mean, Apple. It's not expensive. It's five dollars a month. Uh, and it's that's a Spotify. Kind of that's a casual. Spotify membership. You can use that for Spotify. You can use that for a lot of other things. Do something else with your money. Well, I mean, yeah. also, if you, you compare it to what the Game Pass provides you, it's it's a far less. Uh, See, I feel like the game. If I was Xbox, the Game Pass itself, that is the whole reason. If it, like for, I know most of the the games will be on. You can play them on PC. But if I'm Xbox, I'm like, you have all these free game. Like these are hundred dollars worth of games, thousands of dollars worth of games, and all you have to do is pay a a, a simple price a month, and you yeah. have like get that with the console, and you have a limited all those games. That's that's ridiculous if you really look at it. That's a good deal. Like I'm. Although we we crap on Xbox about not having like their own original like type of standalone yeah, those yeah. big AAA titles the stuff that they do have and what they're offering in terms of like price and especially right now as we're going through through a pandemic I'm not tripping about it they're not charging thirty dollars for a movie so yeah. <laughs> Damn. so yeah <laughs> shade yeah shade um, uh, yeah, well, what do you think Josh I think uh, well look first of all just weird you know like weird for them to not like for for apple to be like nope we're just like it's I, I don't know for it just came out of the blue for me i was like why like what kind of i'm trying to think of what how they could benefit from not from it not being used on there you know um i mean then it's like get, then again considering it's it's a free service and and well it's not free but it's being added to game um game pass for free already my biggest issue with regards to this is is it worth 15 dollars a month when I compare it to Sony PlayStation Now being $10 a month. I mean, yes, you can get the first couple months for like a dollar. I think there's like those sign-up specials. But at the end of the day, eventually you're going to be paying $15 a month for this, right? Now, the only the only difference I see between PlayStation Now and Game Pass is that you are getting those day one, like, uh, you're getting those releases. day one launches, mm -hmm. releases on Game Pass. But when Game Pass first started, I mean, the streaming service still hasn't been added. It was you have to download the game and then you can play it over there. From the get-go, like a year or two years, like years ago, you could stream PS3 games on your PS4. Then they added, then they added the option a while ago where you can download the games. Like you can play brand, you can play 
a lot of Sony exclusive uh, PS4 games you can just download and play it if you're playing, paying the monthly fee. So if like it's one of those things where if they had to charge extra, if they were like, hey, guys, we're bringing the, the Cloud X uh, out. It's going to be amazing. You're just going to have to pay an extra two dollars on top of your 15 dollars a month. If they did decide to charge a little bit extra, it would have been such an I, I, I don't mean to swear, but it would have been such an epic shit show because it's like. You're already paying five dollars more a month, you know what I mean, than the PlayStation Now service. And I don't know, like it. It for me, it was like I like the whole. I like the whole access to to launch to certain launch games. Like I think the fact that you could play Gears of War five on launch day on Game Pass was an amazing strategic move. Uh, I th- I can see Sony doing that in the future with their PlayStation Now service. Um, but it's just in terms of price wise for me, like, is it worth the $15 a month? I don't know. I would be a lot more comfortable paying $10 a month for that service considering uh, Sony's price, you know? Mm-hmm. And just yeah, the sheer but that, amount of, I, sheer I, amount I think of games. The, like, the, the, the $15 is for Ultimate, though, right? Yeah. That's, that, yeah. But, that, but I, I believe you have to have Ultimate to have the cloud. Yes, for the X Cloud. Streaming, but yeah. if you want to just get regular Game Pass, I think it's $9.99 a month. So that's comparable to to the PlayStation version. I mean, but look, they're ten bucks with the streaming, you know. Hmm? They're ten bucks with streaming, Sony. That's what I'm saying. It's like you're paying an extra five dollars for video game streaming uh, compared to the Sony prices, where you're paying ten dollars a month for video game streaming. Yeah, but it, can and you a much stream, bigger library? Can you stream PlayStation games on your? phone oh no no that i guess mind you yes they they do have the they do have the that is the biggest selling point of x cloud is the fact that you can then stream it to your cell phone your tablet or however you want to do it that that's that's for sure I, there could be like there could be a way to get your playstation now to stream i'd have to look it up i think i heard something about that where you're able to play it through a certain system but i mm. could be confusing that with x cloud mm-hmm. yeah i mean yeah, for me, the Game Pass is a great deal that I just personally can't take advantage of just time-wise. It's just, but it might be a good thing to do maybe with Xbox Series X uh, because then you will be getting those Game 1 uh, titles. Um, also, another thing, we had talked about the rumors of, of th- them ending Xbox Live Gold which doesn't seem to be happening because they came out and said that that's not what they're doing, even though they don't have any more yearly subscriptions anymore. And everything's like one month, three month payments, which I don't, I don't get because if they planned on continuing this service, it just sounds, you know, better if they just, you know, have the yearly, because that's how I subscribe yearly to the Xbox uh, gold. I mean, if you're a game pass subscriber, it doesn't matter because then, gold is included in that um but yeah i yeah i i don't quite get what they're doing if they don't plan on ending it why they're cutting off the yearly subscription um sorry just to go back real quick i just saw xbox game pass for pc that's five 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 bucks a month that's a good deal. yeah for a limited time that's a yeah. pretty good deal especially if so, you, yeah. i don't know if they let you prepay but like if I were going to do it on my PC, I just prepay for a whole year. Yeah, hell yeah. And I mean, bucks. the, the, the first I think the first month is a dollar. And the first month is only a dollar, I think. But uh, that's a good. I actually might do that. I might do that tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, five dollars. Let me see. I think I'm already paying for Game Pass on the Xbox. Yeah, I mean. It's separate. No, it's separate I, mean, on, I mean, on the PC. I mean, on the PC. I mean, oh, I was gonna say because I know if you get Ultimate, that's everything included anyway. So if you're paying for Ultimate, it looks like you have the one for PC included. I actually, I he is regular, right? See. You have the regular yeah. Game Pass. I, yeah, I'm, I mean, I have Xbox. I have Game Pass open on my PC right now. I don't know how much I'm paying though, because I have it on both, but I haven't used the Xbox in a minute. How do I see? Uh, Xbox Live features. So I guess I have the ultimate. I don't know. I don't think I have the ultimate though. Ultimate means you can download those games and play them for free on the PC. It also, and it also, oh yeah, well then yeah, I'm, I, I can download these games for free. I can. Ultimate download comes with uh, gold. It comes with gold for free as yeah, well. Yeah, it comes with Live gold. gold is included. 
I think, and yeah, then it's going to come with I'm... XCloud in September. So, mm. all right. So Doran will be able to play on his uh, iPad or his iPhone. Oh yeah, I yeah. Oh, actually, not oh. on his iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Alan Wake because they they don't have it. But uh, also in this article that I was reading, they did say that uh, Steam had their their Steam Link app. They said it almost took a year to be approved by Apple. So. Oh wow. So I guess this isn't the first time something like this is. I mean, happened. Apple does have a right to be cautious. You remember? Did you see? You guys see that that PS4 game that made to the stores? It was like that fem like feminist game or something like that. It was like female mm-hmm. gamer type game that was like you follow gamer, gamer girl. People. Yeah, gamer <laughs> girl. That's it. <coughs> did you see that, Dennis? Were you gonna? I be a saw Twitch like moderator? that thing, but I didn't know what it yeah. was. I thought it was like a parody or something like that. No, it like of, it, it got a lot of backlash. Yeah, made it onto the the store. Like they immediately took it down after like they, they saw the trailer going viral. They took it off, but yeah, like it slipped through the PlayStation Store. So yeah, I, I don't know. I feel bad for the actress, man. They spent like a, a she spent a year researching. That's not funny. Like like um how to be a Twitch streamer and everything. She spent like a whole year doing research on the role because it's live action cutscenes and stuff. I don't know if you've seen a Dennis. It's well, maybe she can invent yeah, like, that. Like, yeah. Let's, let's, let's find the girl. Let's give her a platform. She put a year into becoming a Twitch streamer. She might I as well like, play take something game, out of it. Huh? I kind of want to play the game. Like I saw all the backlash and I was one of the people that it's like, I can see how this can be taken the wrong way. But at the same time, I'm still going to play it. And like, it looks kind of interesting. I, I like choose your own adventure stories, you know? And this is just, uh, this is the, that's all this is really is it's a like choose your own adventure Snatch. story. It was Bandersnatch, but girl version. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, all right. Uh, the other thing, this is, we don't need to talk much about this because we talked about it last week, but they, they confirmed the Halo Infinite multiplayer free to play has, it's, mm. that's happening. That's not smart just a move. Rumor. You know, like we said, it's going to compete with a bunch of other stuff, and we'll see where it lands. I think it'll do well. It won't do. It won't be Fortnite or Apex Legends or anything, but I think, I think Halo has enough behind it to 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 keep it going. Um, let's see real quick. UFC Career Mode trailer came out. I'm excited for that one because it, it it has a what you might call it. You got they a have coach coaches. Now. Yeah. You have a coach. You could have. Uh, I mean, they already had the social media component, but they're kind of taking it a step further. They're also having like you invite other tr- uh, fighters to your training camp, and then like if you like knock them out, then like beef can start happening between you two. Yeah, they're I just making it into like a drama and everything. So it made me think uh, of like WWE in the late two thousands. Uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. So they're, they're expanding more in the career mode, which I think is is cool because that's kind of where people are going to want to play that in the online um Look, and that comes like a out lot of next, changes next... to your move sets as well i mean yeah. you played ufc3 the the career yeah. mode to ufc3 right it looks like the your move sets the way you build and work on that is going to be very different i really enjoyed the career mode for ufc3 so i'm looking forward to this they've just built on some of the the more fun like i, t- I think we spoke about this before i really enjoyed even though it was a very small portion of the game i really enjoyed the whole build your social media following mm-hmm. uh, as a fighter kind of thing i was i was hoping that they would bring more of that in like the whole building hype around fights and stuff like that and trash talking things like that and then you got your you you can build relationships with your coach it's just going to be it's it's going to be more fun. It, it just looks like a huge improvement, you know. And I re- I thought that the previous career mode is fine as is. So yeah. So I'm looking forward to it. Unfortunately, I don't think it's crossplay, so you and me can't play against each other. Because I'm going to get on Xbox. Yeah. Because uh, even though I have a PS4 now, I have um, all my other UFCs on my Xbox. Plus, I had bought the Bruce Lee. Um, DLC. Yes, dude, he and was so, so he, much fun to play as. So he, you know, they keep. Which which is nice is they don't make you pay for him over and over again. They just bring him to the next game and for free if you already bought him. So oh sweet hell yeah. So so I'm gonna get on the Xbox, but yeah. Do you think if the crossplay would work if I if it was to be included in Xbox Game Pass? And seeing as I'm gonna get that for PC, I wonder if it would then work. Maybe so maybe that could possibly work. I mean, there's us, been yeah. a lot of PC Xbox crossplay stuff that's yeah. been happening so we'll see um all right moving on a couple of things uh first one is ninja he started stream back on twitch again uh remember he was you know got that big lucrative deal with uh microsoft and mixer and then 
Microsoft you- decided to get out of the mixer or the streaming uh, business. Uh, he, and then he went to YouTube for a little bit, and apparently he's going to be going back and forth between the two. I don't know if this is a ploy to get someone to sign him exclusively, or if he just wants to hedge his bets and keep, you know, in case. According to happens. Slasher, there's definitely negotiations going on. Uh, who's a fairly trusted source in the community? Uh, Slasher was saying that, like, oh, well, this is more with regards to Doctor Disrespect, which we'll talk about just now, but. They're saying it's like, for instance, like Shroud. Shroud is still in negotiations with, uh, he said that Twitch would be his preferred deal. Like he would want to go back to Twitch. They're just waiting on the like the, the right deals. And I'm sure it's, 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 there's definitely deals going on. We know that. Or like there's negotiations. Whether a deal is going to happen or not, we don't know. But there's definitely negotiations, negotiations happening for sure. And I think it would be smart for Ninja to hop between the two. Like he, uh, he got so much traction that first stream he had on YouTube. Um, compared to his Twitch stream, but that's, that's, it's a different market. It's a different way. Like the, the hype is different as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. He did really uh, well though. Yeah. Good statistics. Uh, and then also, you you have another article about uh, Doctor Disrespect. Yeah. So I mean, as as we all know, Doctor Disrespect got banned permanently on Twitch about a month and a half ago. Nobody knows the reasons. Everyone's speculating, and for that whole like first two weeks of that ban. It is all anybody spoke about in like the, the streamer esports kind of sense. It was all any, and still people are still like talking about it at, uh, at all. Uh, and he's funny enough. I think that he's actually taken this whole him being banned off Twitch permanently, which sucks because that's that's his revenue gone. You know what I mean? Everyone got ref everyone got refunded their subscriptions, which has never happened before in Twitch. When people get banned permanently, your subscriptions will still run through. But Twitch literally refunded so many people's uh, subscriptions they gave people's money back you know what i mean which is a whole sketchy deal about it nobody knows what's going on but he actually he like he teased going live about it two days ago and he like he had a stream which had about like three hundred and fifty thousand people watching uh and it wasn't even him it was like a it was like this uh it was this nice aesthetic scene of a lamborghini parked at a gas station with a bit of rain very nice aesthetic and it's just like the sound clip and it kind of reminds me of a uh, you know, the talk shows on Grand Theft Auto. He's like doing his own interview with funny voices and stuff. And um, so he was just kind of teasing towards it. And then he actually went live. He went live on YouTube and very for like a couple minutes, he spoke about the situation. He's like, everybody wants to know, did I like what happened to me? Why did I get banned? And he's like, mm-hmm. I still don't know. It's a month and a half later. And I still do not know the reasons why I was banned permanently by Twitch. And he's, and then he also came up. And he's like, I know everyone thinks bullshit. Whatever, you're a liar. Of course, you know why you were banned. But he's like, I truly. He says he doesn't know what happened. Um, I mean, which is just crazy. So he also left it to a point where it's like, obviously, there's a huge. He's like, there's a huge like legal battle kind of thing going on right now because he got permanently banned by Twitch just after signing a multi-million dollar deal with them. You know what I mean? So obviously. Like, what happens to the contract? Does he still get his money? Does he not get his money? So there's this huge legal case going on. And he's like, let the lawyers handle uh, handle that. For now, I'll be streaming on YouTube by myself. The stream was incredibly overproduced, which is what I love. That's Dr. Disrespect is known for having the most overproduced streams ever. They're so, there's such good quality. Like, he has a live mixer slash live producer. And it kind of helps him out with everything. And uh, I'm just happy to see him back. He's one of my, he was one of my favorite uh, streamers. And... I'm still really hoping that whatever this reason is, I'm really hoping it's not that serious. He did said that he has like a clear conscience, so he doesn't feel like he's in the wrong. He doesn't know what he did, but uh, life life goes on. So that was that was a big move. He's back. He's probably not going to be signing any deals anytime soon. But he's like people are speculating that just within that stream, the the one from a couple days ago where he wasn't even there. It was just like I said, a clip running like on loop. People were saying that within a couple like maybe that one hour, he made so much money. Because he had the, you know, on like YouTube, you can join and pay $5 a month. Yeah. People were yeah. just spamming joining. Like he was just getting subscriptions like that, like paid subscriptions without even streaming. Like the guy is a god of hype. He turned this situation that was so negative for him into this amazing hype machine. And uh, I'm hoping he was able to make his money back within the month and a half that he lost from Twitch and all the subscribers and having to start over. Um, but that's pretty big news. Uh, I think it was, yeah, I think just it was wondering though, if, if, he, if he doesn't know, one, are we ever going to find out? And two, if Twitch is going to do that, I mean, 
for, in order for them to do that, it'd have to be a pretty big deal, right? It's got to be, man. Yeah. I mean, so there, what were, do other, they know there have been other streamers know. that were permanently banned. There have been a lot, but at the same time, they and they, they also don't know. They just said we got banned. Because no. in their guidelines, it says that they don't have to tell you. You can just be permanently banned. It's their choice, you know? So it's like, I if we don't find out, Dennis, if like, if, because that's the thing is like, he went back to the stream and he spoke about it briefly, but he just, he wasn't talking about it. If I don't find out by the end of this year why he was banned, I'm going to lose my mind because I'm so curious so I will move to San Diego, find this man, shake him down. He's six foot four, by the way. I'll shake him down and I'll be like, you tell me. You tell me what happened, Dr. Disrespect. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, Dorian, what do you think about Ninja and uh, Dr. Disrespect and their streaming platforms of choice? I'm excited to see what Ninja does because you can see that now he's thinking more outside of just being a gamer he's looking at himself more as a brand more as a personality more that he's just trying to expand it beyond gaming so he can take this to another level because i think i recently saw him do an interview with i can't remember what publication it was it was like trh or variety or something where it's like he says he's ready to to enter that hollywood like become not not like not necessarily compare himself to like casey neistat or something but like you can see casey neistat is like has evolved from just becoming that vlogger to actually doing bigger and better things like there's not a spoiler or anything but he's um he's going to be uh, he has a cameo in a uh, upcoming movie called project power on netflix so like i can see twi I, you could see uh ninja is trying to become more and more of just a a brand household a, a household name, name. Yeah. yeah and so like from him doing the mass singer to to then like just trying to expand his revenue into different places i'm excited to see what he does with this and to see i'm wondering did he get to keep all that did he get to keep the money from the mixer contract even though like they got canceled oh, 100%. Like, okay yeah, then he's, I, I if i'm him he's, i'm he's him sent. Yeah, I, if I'm him, I'm investing some of that. I'm donating some of that to charity, but also just like looking at how I can take this, flip this, and be like, all right, this is how much Mixer gave me. YouTube, this is on your table. This is the balls in your court right now to to be the head gaming. Like you can grow and try to overcome Twitch, and is like I think they could potentially do that. They just have to change a couple things with their gaming features in general when it comes to like live streaming and just like making streamers more noticeable on YouTube. But besides that, yeah, I think this would be an interesting move and to see whatever he decides to do with his career in terms of either YouTube or Twitch or both I'm excited to see just because you know a lot of gamers are going to follow his model follow his follow what he's doing and then it's just going to be it's going whatever platform he chooses is going to be beneficial for that platform because he has such a huge following and as for Dr. Disrespect I kind of echo the same things that Josh is saying I'm pretty excited to see what turns out of this news well whether he stays on youtube whether he goes back to twitch whether they all get it figured out i just want to know what happened because I, I wasn't too much of a fan of him before or not a fan of him really at all in general but after i saw the incident happen on like twitter and live like seeing his reaction and like oh i'm getting banned or like all that since since that's been happening i've been very interested to see this whole, whole thing play out because you know when legal things are in the mix they can't talk about it publicly so i'm just i'm just waiting like josh i want to know the inevitable outcome of what ultimately happens if he stays on youtube or if twitch is like all right we were in the wrong or something and they give him back his contract and and let him come back so it's a very interesting time in the the gaming streaming world yeah definitely um all right is there anything else uh you guys wanted to talk about oh, before uh, we uh, head out uh, real quick i've been playing horizon zero dawn and i'll have a, another like a, a a full type of review for the pc version uh my first impressions of that and uh on the website on youtube as well loving it thus far this is like my first pc game that i'm going to like i'm playing through completely as like a campaign story so doing that is very interesting to see and it's very gorgeous i don't have anything i can compare it to i've watched uh, some of the videos of the the gameplay on the ps4 pro and i can definitely tell a slight like a, a definite upgrade to the this uh the pc version so although i didn't get to really play the ps4 version i'm loving the quality of this and it's a very beautiful game and i'm loving the story loving the action i'm deadly as hell with that bow so if you see any of my streams or any of the youtube videos just know i'm deadly with that hawkeye bow so that's all i gotta say for horizon zero dawn loving it thus far and i can't wait to dump into more of it with the pc josh um, how are you enjoying the story mode dorian i'm loving it like it's story's it's, great right it's like i'm so i don't want to i mean the game has been out for a couple years now so i just don't spoil it because i'm gonna play it i'm gonna oh, play shit. it that's <laughs> such a good story Dennis. All right, all right, yeah i right. love it we'll, we'll, we'll talk off camera josh about where i'm at in the story yeah no it's it's great um there was some other news I wanted to talk about, but now that I've read that there's there's been an update on it, which kind of voids all the rumors, 
uh, but I think it's worth mentioning, which was the whole Trump banning um, TikTok. TikTok thing. Hold on, let me bring up the link here real quick so I get this right. Uh, yeah, Trump executive orders looks to ban U.S. transactions with TikTok and WeChat's parent companies could impact the games industry. So Tencent, uh, which is the parent company for WeChat, um, has a lot of involvement. I think they like they own a. I think they own a. I could be wrong, but I think they own like a forty percent stake in Epic Games and a hundred percent stake in Riot Games or something like that. Like as parent companies. So people were thinking that this would affect the microtransactions in those games. Uh, and a White House official confirmed to the LA Times that the this will only block transactions related to WeChat. So Riot Games, Epic Games, all the, the game industry is safe from this. So we don't have to worry. If, if this whole thing goes through with the ban of TikTok and WeChat, we don't have to worry about it affecting the game industry, which is good news. And I, be, uh, I read this somewhere, but I can't pull up the article right now. But I believe they like they're giving Microsoft is still in talks to try to buy TikTok. To buy I think TikTok. they get like they got forty five days. days. So that'd be yeah. cool. Like if tick, like Microsoft, you know, Microsoft buys TikTok and then they get all those TikTok influencers and then pimp them out for the the video game industry and bring every all those influencers make them play, make them stream like a certain amount of day and just be like tell your followers to buy this game. That'd be interesting. Microsoft owning the whole generation of tiktok influencers and, and all their that'd followers be that'd be a game like that's how you sell those consoles you just give them give them one to those tiktok people and they'd be like hey i bought this from xbox go get that and they would do it so that's that's going to be microsoft's that's how they're going to win over sony in the future just buying out influencers and telling them making them go make their followers get games you you know there's one guy sitting there at microsoft going you know what live streaming didn't work out for us you know where it's at it's at the 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 the, the TikTok da, 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 da. You're gonna you're gonna have you're gonna have the hey you're gonna have those TikTok kids doing like Halo dances like with, right, with yeah. uh, Master Chief and stuff. And be like, all right, you want to get the Halo exclusive? Here? Like, well, dude, oh man, probably we're, gonna add we're giving them too many notes. ideas right now, Josh. We got to chill Microsoft. out. We're, 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 we're putting it we're putting it to the universe. It's gonna end up yeah. happening. We got to chill. Yeah. Uh, what, Josh, what are, Josh, what are you playing right now? Uh, currently, now that I have uh, a stable internet connection. Um, uh, I don't really have a much low. I've noticed that uh, just because of it's South Africa, it doesn't matter how how fast your internet is. I just finally got my 100 megabyte line installed, and it is stable, and I'm very happy about that. So I've been playing a lot of Valorant, a lot, a lot of Valorant, trying to unlock the new uh, person that they announced. Well, that they released, like she's out already. She's uh, Killjoy. She's like this, uh, mm -hmm. based off of like this German. Uh, have you played as her yet, Dorian, or seen no, any gameplay? No, I, I, I've only unlocked one character thus far. Like I've been playing so many games, I've only yeah, unlocked. You got like, grind to unlock, bro. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I'm not about to sit there and try to like. I wish we could buy him because I just I would like on Apex. I just be like, all right, fuck it. I'll just pay nine ninety nine for this character because I can't. Yeah. I'm not good enough to grind. But you can do that though. You can. Yeah, do that. I mean, but I'm not going to. Like, I'm I'm not, <laughs> I'm not made it enough in this game. Apex already drained me enough of my money, so I'm I'm Fair I'm good enough, on these yeah. characters. And I, I I love the game as far as Josh. You got to tell me when you're playing because I play I play a decent amount. But I'm I saw good you playing Phoenix. the other day. I'm I good wanted to join you, but. Uh... Dude, yo, Phoenix, Phoenix is my second main. I main Ray's. Uh, she got Which Ray's got I nerfed. Know, I don't know the names. She's I the Brazilian the chick with the with all the bombs and grenades and rocket launcher and stuff. Oh, like no. I main her. She's hella cool, but they nerfed the crap out of her because her grenades were doing way too much damage. So they, I think they took her are damage the, from seventy five down to fifty. Are those the uh, grenade like the color ones? They're they're is like that... the sticky grenades. They like stick to a wall. It's it's how they used to jump around. Like if you ever see the characters like. Kind of like rocket jumping around. They use the grenades, yeah. and then, yeah, it's uh, so I main as her. I think they're gonna nerf this new character Killjoy because her ultimate's a bit too OP. But yeah, I've been playing a lot of Valorant. It's been super fun, and I've also been playing a game that I recommend to 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 you, both of you guys, Dorian. I don't think you have PlayStation Plus, Dennis. I'm gonna assume you do have PlayStation Plus. I do. No, uh, I used to. Oh man, I mean, Dorian. Like, wait, dude, I have whatever you need in order to get online. Dude, well, yeah, the, you've probably got PlayStation Plus, but dude, so they released, there's a game that got released on the 4th of August, but it was free on PlayStation on launch. It came as a, one of the free games for PlayStation Plus. And did you guys ever watch a game, a game show called uh, Takashi's Castle? No, what did you say? Yeah. It's the Takashi's Castle. It's this weird oh, Japanese game show of people like running through like walls that are like, could be, it could be. 
a drywall, it could be a real wall. You don't know. You got to find out. It's like a hundred people running down like these doors. Oh wait, yeah, absolutely. crazy things. I know yeah. what you're talking about. So that they turned that into a game. It's called Fall Guys, essentially, and it's this. It's like eighty percent luck, twenty percent skill. It's the stupidest fun you will have today. I think like it's only seven and a half gigs. And it's it's silly. It's so silly. It's free on PlayStation Plus, and it's literally that as a game. It's like, how can we turn a, a crazy Japanese game show into an actual like multiplayer, uh, like battle royale type game where you, you're basically just doing these like um, platformer rounds with like you got to avoid a bunch of things and you got to like dumb luck as half of it, and you just got to be the last man standing. And it goes through rounds where it like eliminates people at a time, and it's a lot of fun. So I've been playing a lot of Fall Guys, a lot of Valorant, and um, Gonna be playing a lot of Warzone soon, and actually, now that I have an internet connection, I want to play some Apex with you, Dorian. So that'll be cool. Uh, no, I mean, I'm I'm still playing Apex, but we we've moved. I'm I'm grown beyond that in terms of of video games now. You know, I I was just an Apex connoisseur, but now your boy's playing Halo. I'm playing all these other games. So Valorant mm-hmm. is like I'm not even. I, I still love Apex, but since you go from like Valorant and and then Titanfall, where you if you die, you can just bounce back or or things like that. You don't have to yeah. wait too long. That's exactly. been like keeping me away from Apex because although I'm pretty good at Apex, when you die, you're dead for like most of it. Like it's like a 75% chance that you're going to stay dead the rest of that game or that one lucky chance that your teammate's decent enough to go all the way and recover your banner. But besides that, it's like you're just waiting. So I've been loving all these other games. But yeah, we can play Apex, but that's on like that's like number four on my my list right now of games. But let's have play. You played, have you played the Spike Rush yet? Because like I said, what oh, yeah. I like about Valorant what, is how yeah, quick yeah, the game modes yeah. are. That's what, oh, and they added deathmatch. Have you tried deathmatch? They added no, deathmatch. I, I just, I just did spike rush. So I, I played spike rush for like an hour, and I got so many games in, and then I was like, all right, let me do the, Good, yeah. let me do the actual game, and then I only played two rounds of that, and that took like thirty minutes each. So I'm, I, I definitely love spike rush because that's yeah. more of my stamina of types of games. Yeah, they added a free for all deathmatch as well. I think it's first to thirty, uh, no power ups. It's just guns. It's just pure deathmatch, and you have like a mini map, and there's like red flashes, so you can kind of track down your uh, enemies. It's a lot of fun. So I've been playing a lot of Valorant. Super excited about that. I'm actually going to get the Battle Pass because the previous the previous season didn't have any like good sk- weapon skins and things like that in this Battle Pass. But this Battle Pass looks a lot more worth it in terms of like your money, which is good. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to play, especially now that you have better internet and we can stream that. And I figured out how to do co-op cameras and stuff with Dennis, so we're all good oh, yeah. on that yeah. too. Did that on Avengers. Uh, yeah, for me, I've been playing God of War lately now that I'm done with Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, first time playing it, so it's a... I heard you had some difficulty with the first boss. Yeah, I finally beat his ass because I... And I used my Ghost of Tsushima knowledge because I was using... I think I wasn't using the, the parry or uh, yeah. uh, the block uh, properly. Um, and now, yeah, I beat him and now I'm, I'm still not that far. I'm still probably... In that was that first the first world boss? that you go into? Was that the first boss or like the first like the first? Do you mean the first boss as in like one of uh not for spoiler reasons, but I guess I can say this one of Odin's sons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. His he comes down while you're at your house and yeah, he, got, he looks like Conor McGregor. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. beat him. <laughs> that was the part I got stuck at before. Beat it, beat him up, and then I uh, went to uh, a bunch of other places. I think I'm on uh, the Elven world. Alfenheim oh, nice. or something like that. Nice. So, Niflheim. Yeah, it's a very, very epic game. Like everything you do is epic. You know, like big buildings, big enemies, big kills. You know, um, so I, I, I'm enjoying that right now. See, see how long it takes me to finish. Just you wait, Dennis. Um, like without any how long spoilers. is the game? How long is it? I mean, depends mm-hmm. how long you take your time with it. Like I'm, I was a completionist. Like I had to explore every I'm, single little area, get every single little uh, thing. So it took a long nah, time I'm for me. I, I'm all about the story. I want to um, get the story. See, what, 35, 40 hours if you're just doing the story? Like, it's still a fairly long game. Um, yeah, that's That's long. just me speculating, though. But, dude, Dennis, just just you wait, bro, because... Don't spoil well, anything. That, I still, I'm no, still at the end. Don't worry. No game, spo- no game spoilers or story spoilers. But as you go further on, because, like, in any God of War game, the more you play the game, you unlock different weapons. And yeah. like when when I played God of War, I was like, oh, this is my axe. This is this is it. But it's like you there's there's so much more depth to the game in terms of combat uh, as nice. you progress further on in the game. So look forward to that. Cool. And then obviously I played Avengers with Doran, but playing some more Avengers uh, co-op. Uh, and then I think that's it. 
All right, uh, Dorian, where can people find you? You guys can find me on Twitter at Dorian Parks and Rec. You can find me on Instagram at Dorian Parks, and you can find me here on Collider Games. Josh? Uh, you guys can find me on Instagram at Josh.Toki, and you guys can find me on Twitch at Josh underscore Toki. And you can find me on Twitter at Think Hero, Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. Make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Collider Games. Also subscribe to our uh, Collider Factory podcast feed where you get this podcast plus our interviews and reviews and all that good stuff. So until next time, see you guys later.